Should I be exposing myself to these germs now while I'm young and healthy? You have no choice. <laughs> You're being exposed. <laughs> you were at my house earlier. You have to be exposed. <laughs> Um, yeah, don't worry, you're exposed, and if you haven't died, that means your immune system is functioning, so that's definitely a positive thing. So I could have antibodies to the MRSA? Yeah, I mean, you do, um, but you're not always going to be so awesomely healthy, or they're going to get more virulent, which they're doing, and they're going to say, fuck you, to your immune system eventually. But Olivia's going to teach us how to build ourselves up, so that's not going to happen. Um, <laughs> but they are getting more virulent, they're getting more infectious. Um, they're getting more able to penetrate our body's defenses. More people who are not old or young or AIDS patients or already sick uh, are getting or acquiring these infections. So more people who ostensibly should be able to fight it off are not fighting it off. So there's a real collapse towards the middle against these kind of margins of vulnerable people towards everybody. Sorry, is it meningitis sometimes actually more fatal if you're more Total exception, but yes, that's totally yeah. true. Yeah, but it's, uh, meningitis has almost an autoimmune component where your immune system is almost attacking your body and making things <laughs> worse. Uh, yep. Sorry. But that's that's, a, that's the rare example of the bacteria that kind of engineers an autoimmune response in your body when shit goes wrong. But um, yes, totally. Yeah. Uh, Patrick, what's your kind of sense? And I can see this going in one of two, way, two ways. You talked about going back to medieval times and we think of the, uh, the Black Death and the plague where you know, a third of the population dies yeah. versus going back to the 19th century before we had all of these antibiotics that where life expectancy was 20 years less than what it is now or 15 yeah. years less. I mean, are we talking about just going back to a lower life expectancy because individuals as they age become less resistant, or are we talking about catastrophic? Uh... Good question. Depends on the bug. Dep I mean, <clears throat> the doomsday scenario is something highly infectious and highly drug resistant and highly communicable between humans. You have that, you're done. That's a third of the world right there. And that's the natural order of things, frankly, over time. That's how nature keeps balance on overpopulation, and we choose the system with a lot of technology and drugs. but. Correct sooner or later. To what degree is a really good question, and everybody's asking that question. Um, it could be 1800s. It could be 1000 AD. Uh, it, it's it's hard to say. It's there's the worst case scenario and the best case scenario. They're all worse than right now. And right now is our room. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, is it, is it a little louder? It's like green alcohol killer. That's going to be all Olivia. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if green alcohol kills MRSA. Oh, green alcohol kills everything. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, shit, yeah. Um, but it also, if you like, say you have a gash on your arm right. and you pour isopropyl alcohol or green alcohol right. all over it, yep, you're probably going to wipe out whatever infectious and nasty is on there, but you're also wiping out all the good bacteria well, in your wound that are right, healing. And you might hurt yourself. I I, yeah, I, I wouldn't go rubbing grain alcohol in open wounds necessarily. Um, or, or, or thinking that that's the best. I, I think there are. Uh, yeah, that would kill up, sure. Short answer, yeah. <laughs> um, I was wondering, is there a comparison between, you said if you go through a full uh, circle of, or whatever, of uh, antibiotics? Of course, it uh, Yeah. Right? Take them if they're prescribed. No, I mean, I mean how much higher is the attack when you take it from medicine in comparison to when you just ingest it? The concentration? Go and take it through the food system. Yeah. Oh! Yeah. Um, I mean, the concentration of pharmaceuticals versus like any like residues of antibiotics that you might be exposed to otherwise? Yeah. Tiny, tiny fractional though possibly still active to select in whatever environments you might find residues of antibiotics um, for the drug resistant bacteria. But in terms of like actually affecting you, people have asked that question, especially for babies. 
And I remain steady convinced that exposure to antibiotics in like drinking water and a lot of other ways that we might get exposed to like residues, not to actual drugs, could totally have an impact on our immune system health. I would think that's a, and people have been trying to answer that question, not entirely successfully yet, but it's a really legit question to think about. Because there's residues persist for a long time when the drug, you know, you take drugs, you excrete them, they get into the water system in different ways. They're, I mean, drinking water everywhere in every city across America can test positive for uh, really, really small doses of active residues of all kinds of drugs, including antimicrobials. So, yup, that could totally matter, probably most for developing young people, babies and the like, um, but there's a lot of potential there and that question definitely hasn't been answered. But just to say, if you get prescribed a course of antibiotics, take the whole thing, do take it. If you don't, I mean, the worst possible thing is you take some of them, you wipe out your healthy bacteria, You've left the drug-resistant bacteria, and now they're coming back to completely fuck everything. And that's the worst. That's why they say take the whole course of antibiotics, because hopefully you at least nuke everything. Uh, but it's it's getting real iffy, uh, and it's all ultimately not helping you be resilient against these types of infections as you age. I have some friends who have to go on antibiotics sometimes. Yeah. Well, they <laughs> insist on getting wasted while they're taking antibiotics. Oh yeah. How bad is that for them? I don't know. <laughs> I know that like something to do with the reason for that is like the gut bacteria you're killing off are part of what helps you metabolize alcohol. So maybe that shit's hitting your liver like super undiluted if you haven't got the right gut bacteria and maybe you could really screw yourself that way or get some real liver damage going on, but I don't know. That's in a pretty different realm of like tox toxic things, but I I think that's why that happens, is like you just don't have the, it's the, you know, your metabolism in the same way that your immune system gets thrown off is kind of screwed up when you have antibiotics in your system. Seems like this question is a real social justice issue also, just in terms of workers being yeah, but also my primary care physician used to work in the ER at Hopkins and she has all sorts of theories about MRSA and the levels of incarceration in the oh, city. Yeah. And do you know of any studies that have looked at jails or prisons with oh, MRSA? Yeah, I mean very, um, yes, people have looked at that and they've identified, yeah, you go to jail or you go to prison for a while, there's a huge likelihood you're coming out at least carrying something nasty and infectious and drug resistant. Uh, which only makes sense. I mean, you have a healthcare setting in jails, you have tons of people in close quarters sharing everything. Um, so yeah, it's a huge social justice issue. Not just because of people who are like slaughterhouse workers or, or agricultural workers who are exposed to this stuff in their, in their shitty menial job, but also because there's a huge disparity in these exposed otherwise. It's, it's pretty remarkable. Yep. Prison, prison's one of the worst of all. It's understudy, but it's been looked at enough to know it's a bad place. And there's obviously a huge socioeconomic disparity who goes to prison. Any more questions? Sorry. Right. Okay, so say we, we knock ourselves out of the whole population, right? Wait, wait. Four. Four. Okay, so say we destroy ourselves. Probably only a third. Only yeah. a third? Okay. Yeah, probably like a third. But before global warming happens, it, it, nature yeah. seems to work by a nice. Oh, no, I'm just talking about the infections. No, the climate change is probably going to get the rest of us. <laughs> so, does our antibiotic use affect wild animals, like creatures? Maybe. Because we're hitting all of our domestic animals, we're hitting ourselves. So, they're like, they other fit. animals out there, if we destroy ourselves, they might be affected by that too, or they just immediately like, oh, they're gone. Yeah, pity the poor animals. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, they, they, they've seen it in bats, they've seen yeah. it in deer, they've seen it in all kinds of wild animals. So yeah, it's, it's in everywhere in the environment. I mean, every stream, every lake, every everywhere you go to, you can find it. Not all the time, but a lot of the time. And in enough places, and in a growing number of places, and with growing frequency. So yeah, they found it in ugh, so many animals. 
and so many like pests too, like rats and ticks, and bed bugs. It's crazy. They have bed bugs with MRSA. That's almost as bad as the drug resistant gum right here. Uh, well, oh yeah. Oh god. Oh yeah. Wait, what did she say? They're asking if they could transfer it. Of course, if they could carry it, they could transfer it. And a, the, a bite is a perfect place for it to start. A little puncture wound. Yummy. This conversation. Dark. You may have got any really. So is, is like the, just the best thing for one to do is to just like be healthy? Well, I think Olivia's going to give us a lot of advice on like the best thing, the best things one can do, or some of the best things one can do to stay healthy. But yeah, honestly, your immune system, the reason these drugs suck is because they can never be as good as your immune system. So your immune system is as adaptive to new challenges as our bacteria. You know, it's got this incredible adaptivity that drugs are, uh, atom bomb, you know, they're a straight line, and these diseases are a system of systems in their complexity and in the way that they can exchange this resistance and get to new environments and adapt to new realities. So a linear tool against a systemic opponent can never, ever, ever catch up. You just can't play that game. But your immune system is amazing at that, and in fact it's had the exact same amount of time to evolve that as we've been around, so it's, it's a uh, it knows how to play the game. And antibiotics actually handicap your immune system from playing that game when it's functioning properly. But it's a fine line. You need these drugs because you're going to get infections that your immune system is going to be overwhelmed by, or you're going to already be sick, and then you're going to get an infection, and your immune system won't be able to handle it. But the smart, judicious use of these drugs is so essential to them continuing to be relevant. Uh, soon we're just going to be using drugs that don't work and they'll just be hampering our own health further. Um, so yeah, the best thing you can do is honestly keep yourself healthy in as many ways as possible. Be nutritionally filled and, you know, be, be active, be exercising, be challenging your immune system. Don't, you know, uh, but yeah, it's bad, bad news. There's no, there's, there's not a lot of like, Olivia's gonna have a good news. I'm gonna figure it out. Shit on things. It's cool. Um, has all of your study influenced your own lifestyle? Like, are you a vegetarian? Or... <laughs> no, I eat, I eat a lot of meat. Um, I really love meat. But um, I eat all my meat from local farms because they haven't gone through industrial slaughterhouses. I think that the industrial slaughterhouse is like a crazy prime place for the crossover of um, the cross contamination of meat with a lot of different really bad food system bacteria. The really small farmers market meat never went through that system. I'll have you know the organic shit did. It, oh, I found that out this year. It went right through the industrial slaughterhouse and came out with a profile that is shockingly similar to the conventional stuff. So from like a uh, food safety point of view, same thing. Same thing by the time we get to the far end of that slaughterhouse. Going in looks different, coming out looks the same. Um, and that meat has not gone through that food system. My particular PhD bullshit is going to be ex exactly about comparing the direct market, farmer's market type meat to the industrial supply chain meat. Um, maybe we'll have some actual answers, sort of, kind of, maybe. Um, or at least the beginning of better questions. Uh, more informed questions, but that has not been really studied. My, the influence it's had on my own habits is that that's what I do, because I have done some really preliminary tests that would suggest at least the three farms that I get meat from are pretty good. Uh, better than average for what you see as like a background for the industrial food system. Um, I'm also pretty fastidious in my kitchen with food safety stuff. I really clean that for me. Uh, but, <laughs> Uh, and use a lot of oil and water, uh, but yeah, you can you can be really on point with keeping your kitchen clean and probably not procuring industrial meat would be uh, an, an advantage, if not like a really great safeguard. But 
more to come on that. Maybe I'll give another lecture when I actually have some data about that. Connor's standing. Oh, no, you've got lots of time. Oh, great. Any more questions? So, what's your stance on that? Um, don't use it. I mean, don't use it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's bad. I think it's, I mean, I think there are, there's, again, there's a place for it. If you're walking out of the hospital, use the shit out of it. Use it like crazy. Um, but if you're using it because you touched a doorknob for the 15th time today, you're crazy. And that's actually making you weaker overall and making for all of this, so don't do it in selfish pants. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm against that, except in like some really rare circumstances. So, Patrick, when you're talking about cleaning the kitchen, keeping it clean, I mean, what's your thought on wooden cutting boards or the use of bleach? I mean, what do you do yeah. to uh, make sure that you really are, especially if you have chicken and okay. Yeah, um, glass cutting boards for me, straight up. Uh, and Bleach is great, uh, but it leaves a residue, and you don't want that on anything that you're going to be eating off of anytime soon if you're not going to get a chance to wash it again. Um, I use uh, vinegar. I like acetic acid concentrated. It's pretty good. It kills stuff real nice. They don't like organic acids, the bugs. They really don't. Um, and that does not you know, contribute to any mounting resistance. Um, there are a good number of cleansers you can use that aren't chlorine or bleach based. I just don't like bleach. Spray, bleach. spray white vinegar will do the same thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, yes. White vinegar with maybe like She's going to be the person to ask about all this shit, but yes. Yeah. I would say there are a lot of... With one lot. drop of thyme essential oil, which right. is stronger than bleach. But probably doesn't leave uh, cancer causing residue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I, I like bleach because it's good at killing things. When I work in the lab, I bleach the Jesus out of my equipment and stuff, but, because that's, it's dead. Uh, but, mm, food stuff, I don't know. I don't like the residue of carcinogens on my cutting board. Your, your feelings. Um, we have lots of time. You show more gross slides. <laughs> Or we can toss the toss over to Olivia. Sounds like a toss. Have a drink. Or you can toss it. Okay, so uh, before we go to the intermission portion of the evening, there's a couple of more administrative things I'd like to talk about. And the first one is to say that the lectures are better when you're in the front row. You notice <laughs> that the only person who's in the front row right now just gave a lecture. Uh, I'd also like to point out that this evening the front row is farther away from the stage than it normally is. So if it's proximity that you're concerned with, you're safe tonight. Um, the other thing is that, and I always forget to say this, uh, don't go back here. Don't do it. You, you get your drinks, you can bring them around out front. We have a special dispensation from uh, a cop. Funny cop. That you can just walk next door with your drink, but don't tell the cop. Um, and then uh, we're going to have an extra early announcement, uh, a, a mid-break announcement uh, from, uh, from Craig, who is, is kind enough to let us use this space, about this space, so Craig. Uh, yeah, so hey, I'm Craig. I'm, I'm the uh, director of the Yellow Sign Theater. And uh, the reason that the front row is a little further back than it usually is, is that we're going to be doing ballistics tests in here for the stage blood for our next production. Uh, that is the splash zone that you guys are sitting in. We are uh, trying to see just how far we can splash. Uh, we are a small theater company. Uh, we produce all of our own work. Our mission is to reacquaint people with older forms of popular culture. Uh, things that uh, perhaps we should remember when looking at the pop culture of our own time. And I want to let people know about our upcoming Halloween show, Dark Spell. It'll be opening 
uh, the 19th of October. It is our second anniversary show, and it is inspired by the RKO and Universal Studios suspense of horror movies of the 1930s. Uh, it's set in a speakeasy in 1927 where strange and mysterious and Lovecraftian things are going on. Uh, someone smiled at Lovecraftian, so thank you. Um, we will be presenting a full evening of variety entertainment, including burlesque, uh, really bad worship belt comedy, uh, really good jazz singing, uh, and some astonishing stage magic, all within an interactive horror piece uh, that will, and I, I, I do say this in, in earnest, get everyone probably to the range of you two folks sitting there covered in stage play. Uh, so we encourage you to come out, we'll be running the 19th, 20th, we'll be running the next weekend, which I guess is the 26th, 27th, 28th, Halloween Eve and Halloween Night. Uh, the show did sell out all performances last year, so we do encourage people to buy early at brownpapertickets.com. You can find us at the Yellow Sign Theater on Facebook, please spell through the correct way with an R and E if you're looking for us. Thank you very much. Tis the season on that one, but uh, but now we are at the intermission portion of the of the evening. I'd like to remind everyone uh, to think of what it is that you're going to lecture on, and tell me through our Facebook page messaging service as soon as possible. And I do want to see a lecture from every single one of you out there. Uh, and also, this is a community building event, so during the intermission, if you could please find someone to make up. Thank you. <laughs> so, 10 minutes. <laughs>